in a Mississippi River Oxbow about uh, 30 miles south of Memphis. I was down there fishing with my son and he hung something. I thought it was a big, big catfish. I really did. And it just strip line. Billy would, he'd gain 10 yards and geez, the fish would take 20 yards. And finally, after a period of time, fast forward, we got it up to the boat and I looked at it and I said, what is that? What kind of fish is that? And he said, I don't know. Well, that was the first time I ever saw one. And today, I know for a fact there's nothing that I know of that's more detrimental to our waterways than, than these things. Invasive carp have been an issue anywhere along the main stem Mississippi River. If you're connected to the Mississippi River, if your waterways are, there have probably been carp there even if they didn't stick. Uh, the first places we saw them were in the river and then in little river chutes, oxbows, that sort of thing. And then they just spread outward from there. Essentially, I grew up in a, a fisherman's paradise uh, at the you know age of about 12 or 13 years old. I could go out in a john boat with a cast net and go catch shad, a five gallon bucket worth of shad in about five minutes. Uh, to go catch catfish on the river, uh, or you, you could go hop in a boat at lunch and go fill up a cooler with crappie and brim or bass, whatever you felt like. Uh, and then slowly but surely that all came to an end, which I would have never imagined. So now the next generations will not be able to experience that unless we can come up with a solution to get rid of the Asian carp or at least keep them in check. So when we talk about invasive carp, um, typically we're referring to four different species. There's silver carp, big head carp, black carp, and grass carp. Silver carp are the ones that are really the most prevalent in Tennessee. They are also the ones that people associate most quickly with invasive carp because they're the ones that you see on the news a lot of the time, jumping out of the water, you know, landing in your boat or hitting people. And so the silver carp uh, are the ones that are you know, potentially more dangerous. The silver carp and big head carp both are filter feeders. They feed really low on the food chain and compete with native fish for those food resources. Then the black carp and grass carp, they, they look fairly similar. In Tennessee, we haven't seen a whole lot of black carp. We are concerned about them coming here because of the impact that they can have on our native mussels. We are in Henry County in Paris, Tennessee. The 200 boat tournaments generate about $1.3 million, and that's conservative. Prior to Asian carp becoming widespread in the Tennessee River and Kentucky Lake, uh, we would have about five of those a year. We actually began to see a decline about 2019, and we went from hosting five, in some cases even six, of those big tournaments, we had none. Uh, the small tournaments dropped off. Kentucky Lake had developed a reputation for being full of Asian carp. And the truth of the matter is, uh, all the game fish were drying up. You know, not too long after I was elected uh, to Congress back in 2016, I had a number of constituents come and say, we've got a real problem with, with Asian carp in, in West Tennessee. I had TWRA, I had the Tennessee Wildlife Federation, come and start to educate me and talk to me about, not only from a West Tennessee standpoint, but from a statewide standpoint, what the issues were, how pervasive it was. And then, kind of like all in a row, Bill Dance, uh, who is a constituent, said, I want to talk to you about Asian carp. And he showed me video, and he said, I'm, I'm going to take you out. I'm going to take you out on the Mississippi and show you the, the problem of, of, uh, of Asian carp. So it was, it was really collective. You know, whether you're, whether you're coming to Tennessee, whether you're from Tennessee and you're fishing, whether you're traveling to Tennessee, because it's such a great, we all know, we live in such a, a great state, one of the prettiest states in the nation. Um, you know, who wants, to go, who wants to go fishing when you gotta deal with uh, Asian carp, when you gotta combat that? 
And so it's a, again, it's a problem whether you're talking about uh, fisheries, whether you're talking about tourism, just wanting to relax. And so it, it really spans across the board.